When you're metabolizing fat, it's not just about energy. Fat metabolism is necessary for every cell in your body. And the mitochondria are critically important. Fat metabolism supplies all those substrates for the walls, for the, the, the super complexes that exist within the mitochondria. Um, it's all done with fat fats and lipoproteins. It doesn't happen on carbs, folks. And carbs do not build mitochondrial biogenesis. They don't build mitochondrial density. They burn mitochondria. So early this year, a podcast came out between one of the top ultra runners, um, in the 100 mile distance, a fellow named Jeff Browning and um, a coach named Jason Coop, who has a podcast. And this podcast was sort of a, a conversation about fat adaptation and carbs. And it was obvious that uh, Mr. Coop, who is with Carmichael Tra Training Systems, um, still had a lot of skepticism and doubt about. Um, Bad adapted, even though Jeff at the ripe age of 48 is one of the top runners in the 100 mile mountain ultra um, competitions. And so it got me thinking about something and, and today it's, it's really about how people look what's right in front of them rather than what's behind the scenes. And, and that's a lot of where the benefits of fat adaptation for both performance and health come in. And we're just going to simplify it and, and kind of speak to the mitochondria here. And as everybody should know by now, because there's a lot of talk about mitochondria, those are the, your, your energy cells. That's where the, the magic happens to produce ATP, keep your body alive. And mitochondrial health is, is a very well talked about, but not very well understood in the true sense um, uh, subject. And so this is where fat adaptation has a clear advantage over being a high carb athlete. Yes, carbs get you to perform, but if you're using carbs chronically and all the time, there's some unintended consequences. And that is when you're looking at it as a mitochondrial level and when you're using a lot of glucose versus using a lot of fat through beta oxidation or ketosis, um, you're creating a situation where there's a lot of oxidative stress. And this impacts the mitochondria in a not so good way. And the more you have oxidative stress, the more you're impacting your mitochondria. And the more chronically you do this, the more you're impacting your mitochondria in a way that's not healthy. As I say, all roads lead to acetyl-CoA. And if you're Using carbs, that road is pathway is glucose. Whereas when you're metabolizing fat at a high rate, and at the high rates that we are seeing with Vespa OFM athletes, at over two grams a minute of peak oxidation, this has profound effects in terms of reducing the damage. That's the paradigm shift. That recovery you feel when you're a fat adapted Vespa user is really about damage prevention. And this is magical, but it's more than that. When you're metabolizing fat, it's not just about energy. Fat metabolism is necessary for every cell in your body and the mitochondria are critically important. And Fat metabolism for building the mitochondria and building more mitochondria and improving the size and the density, that's where it all happens. It doesn't happen on carbs, folks. Carbs do not build mitochondrial biogenesis. They don't build mitochondrial density. They burn mitochondria. Whereas fat metabolism supplies all those substrates for the walls, for the, the, the super complexes that exist within the mitochondria. Um, 
it's all done with fat, fats and lipoproteins. So fat's that carrier of all those essential items and metabolism of fat is what creates your strong mitochondria. So it's not just that fat burning reduces oxidative stress, but fat metabolism creates the mitochondria. So the more you can shift to more fat metabolism, the more your body can generate um, mitochondrial density, mitochondrial numbers within the cells. And it actually has the effect of when you do bring those carbs back in, you can use them more effectively without doing the damage and getting even more benefits from carbohydrates while still getting all the benefits of fat adaptation. So I've given you a very general conceptual model. Um, I do delve into the science. I'm looking at the, this whole idea of the super complexes within the mitochondria and how they form and fold. There's like four different types of mitochondrial super complexes. They're looking at how they adapt, how they adapt to hypoxia, you know, and that's when your body shifts from doing more fat to doing more carbs because carbs are more, um, use less oxygen. And this is one of the things that was brought up in that podcast. Yes, when you're at higher oxygen demand, you shift to more carbohydrates, but when you have more mitochondria and you have more mitochondrial density and larger mitochondrial, your body has the capacity to keep burning fat at higher and higher levels. And when you do kind of start shifting over, you have so much that you're not burning it all up. And so these are really key things to kind of understand about how fat metabolism reduces the oxidative stress and creates a more robust cell full of mitochondria that can take the blunt of using carbohydrates and switching to more carbohydrate metabolism at those higher intensities when you're trying to race or train at the highest levels. So little primer, hope this kind of gives you a little something to think on and, and how what we look at is not just what's in front of us, but what's behind the scenes to create that whole athlete that's getting to, to reach that, that health and performance potential because they're tapping in to that limitless energy supply exactly the way nature intended. Thanks very much.